Often disincentive to work boost morale or does it hold someone back to the point of harming that person? Former Senator Rick Santorum joins us. Nice to see you, Senator. Thank you, Greta. I guess you can tell by my questions I'm not wild yeah. about the fact. Uh, I actually think people like to work. I think yeah. that they enjoy working. Um, I mean, with it, I mean, some people have just terrible jobs. Not everybody, but that it's a, it's it's a good work thing. Work is to a work. good thing. I mean, the the whole Protestant work ethic, the American work ethic. That's that's you know we we are we are criticized around the world by by those in uh, Eastern Europe by working too much and focusing too much on work. But it really is the essence of the country, of the country, why we are such a great country, why we have such a great standard of living, why we have the ability to rise in America, is because we do reward work. The interesting thing about Obamacare is this is not new. What Obamacare does to middle and lower, middle lower income Americans with this phase out is in almost every other single poverty program, whether it's food stamps or Medicaid or welfare, the more you work, the lower your benefits get. So what, what, what Paul Ryan was talking about, a poverty trap, there is a poverty trap right now. In, across a lot of government programs, this now expands it to even higher income people to disincentivize them to work. If I suppose if you have a really crummy job, and there are a lot of really crummy jobs where you're paid very poorly, if you, I mean, I would hope that you could find a better one, you could develop skills and get a better one, but if you quit, and you go home from that crummy paying job, chances are you don't have a dime to do anything, let alone health insurance. What in the world are you going to do at home? There's just, I mean, there, I mean, what are you going to do with yourself? How are you going to pay your rent? How are you going to put food on the table? Yeah, the idea that you're going to pursue your dreams by working less. It's a pipe dream of, of Congressman Van Hollen. This is, that, that's, that really is not helpful to the American public. I mean, you know, I talked about uh, all the time that uh, a study that was done by the Brookings Institute that said if you do three things in America, you're guaranteed not to be in poverty. One, graduate from high school, not college, high school. Work and get married before you have children. You do those things in America, less than 2% chance you'll ever be in poverty. Now the president's saying, you don't really need to work. We'll take care of you. Uh, you, can, you can work less and, and relax more. That is not going to get people out of, the, out, of, uh, out of poverty. You know, what's going to get people out of job poverty, I mean, is, I mean, this whole idea of job creation. And if, if now we've got the New York Times editorial, which is supposedly the gold standard for many people in terms of where they're saying that this mostly a good thing, a liberating result of the law where people, you know, quit their jobs. And, of course, it's going gonna, it's gonna to enrage taxpayers because now they're, they're going to have to pay for the subsidies. So taxpayers aren't going to be happy. It's going to cre create more dissension in this country. But sort of the whole philosophy is like, you know, just you know, just just quit your job. Don't look for something better. And, and the economy, you know, we're not getting better jobs for people. But just uh, the next best thing is just quit your job. Well, again, it, 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 it emphasizes the wrong thing, that the way you achieve and, and rise in America is through work and hard work and, 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 and doing the best at whatever job. You mentioned, well, the low-paying job, not a very good job. Every job is a good job and worth doing Oh, come well. on. They're crummy you, jobs. They're, they're really rotten jobs for people who are underpaid. With that. They're I, terrible jobs out but, there. But it's still worth doing well because of the opportunity that, that you, you, know, you, can, you can rise and, and do better. But if well, you don't do well at a, at a bad job, you're not going to I mean, my first job was cleaning toilets. And I, you know, I did it as well as I could, and I got a better job. And that's the way it works. I guess it's the whole, the whole sort of thinking, sort of the ideology. Rather than taking responsibility as leaders and creating more jobs, we're now going to say, oh, don't worry about the job. Job, it doesn't matter. It's almost sort of reflection on, on the failure to develop good jobs and get a robust economy that now is we're sort of now they're trying to spin this that this is a good thing. Well, it really is government taking care of you. Don't worry. You don't have to work anymore. Government will take care of you. We'll, be, we'll provide for you. And one thing that's not noted in this report, because they didn't factor it in in the report, is what the impact of the soon to be mandate. You know, the, the president waived the mandate on large and small businesses. Once that mandate goes into effect, you're not going to just create a disincentive to work, as you heard from Tom Stenberg you're going to see a lot of businesses cutting back workers and, uh, and, and jobs, job, job growth flattening, flatlining as a result. Well, we need to, we need to get jobs to help uh, people who are lower income and give them the opportunity. And uh, telling them that, you know, just quit your job and follow your dream is, uh, not you know, good do, advice. do that if you've you got enough money to do that. Not but anyway, advice. not good advice. Anyway, Senator, nice to see you, Thank sir. You.